This is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams, reporting tonight from Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, Al, thanks so much. To some, it's trash, to others, memorabilia, but to officials of the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History... Campaign headquarters are just a heap of junk. Your nomination for President of the United States. I do so with humility. Right down there on the floor behind us, the two guys who might have the best jobs at this whole convention. But what's a junk heap to most people is a gold mine to curators of the nation's attic, the Smithsonian Institution owned by the people of the United States. Prowling the convention floor, trying to talk delegates out of hats, signs, pins, and other souvenirs of the Republican convention. Bill Geist went out with him in New Hampshire to see how the attic gets its stuff. At the heart of today's pitched primary battle were Bob and Pat, Lamar Hello. and Steve, Harry and Larry. Would it be possible to have that sign? Where did you get your buttons? Could I have one of your leaflets for our collection? Normally, Harry Rubenstein and Larry Bird toil in the Smithsonian's archives. This unit has badges, ribbons, stick pins. Cataloging and filing thousands of artifacts in the museum's political collection. They represent the celebration of democracy and how people express their sense of identity and their, the sense of the nation. But every four years, these political historians are let out of the Smithsonian's basement to go forth and procure. How about the tax code sign in your window there? Scrap yeah. the tax code. Yeah. Thank you very much. One big scavenger hunt for more exhibits, more artifacts, more stuff. They visit the front runners. They have food here, Hare. How do you feel about him coming in taking a collage off the wall? This is history in the making. The low-key campaigners. You think you get your nerve up and ask for the basketball backboard? It's a great object, but it's a storage problem. The low-key and the off-key. Thank you. I want to thank all my supporters. It's not always easy for combat curators out on the front the lines. Oh, it's the back. Sneaking in back doors. There is only one candidate in this race that can do that job, and his name is Bob Dole, and I'm very proud of him. Scrounging under tables, whatever it takes to bring back the goods. I guess I should find out whose stuff this is before I rifle through it. If these guys weren't curators, wouldn't this be petty theft? Uh, excuse me, that's mine. Why not? <laughs> guys are stealing their stuff in the other room. Is it yours? Yes, it's mine. As is that. Thank you. That's no problem. They meet interesting people and attend pivotal political functions. You got the curators there with you. What, what are they going to tell us what they scoured up so far? How did you guys get into this? Were you the two kids when you were like three, four years old, totally into treasure hunts? And not so much that. It's really working at the Smithsonian and having this incredible collection and then realizing that every four years we needed to keep bringing it up to date. Well, you're a political, both of you are political history buffs. I know you were in, you told me you were a hoarder. Just admit it, Larry. <laughs> no, not really a hoarder. Sort of a, a long line of accumulators. <laughs> but, well, that's uh, a safe way to say it. Yeah, but the collection that we have goes back to George Washington and maybe even a little before. So we come here as a way to build it out, you know, into the present. All right, so give me a taste. You've already grabbed some buttons. Okay, show us real quickly. Right. Well, we approach the delegates and, you know, each delegation often produces their own button to celebrate their locale. And so we ask them. And it's a way of really showing local pride. All right, so here's a question for you. Dan's been with us all week. He's our fabulous intern. And Dan, real quickly, tell us about this tie. This is my dad's 1980 tie from the Republican Convention. He got it for donating some money. Uh, if you can see on the back, it has the Republican Convention sign and everything. So. All right, what do you think, guys? Is it Smith Smithsonian worth? Yeah, sure. That's a, that's a prime collectible that, that's got the... Uh, it's got the balloons and a little flag motif, and it has the story of his father at the convention in 1980, the Reagan, the Reagan convention. So that would be the first, well, the first successful Reagan convention. But that's something that, of course, we would want to have. But I'm sure if you asked him, he couldn't give it because you know it means so 
Well, tell him. Did you give it away? Oh, absolutely not. Oh, well, I guess that's... I, I, I think we'll have to keep working on him, right? Okay. Yeah, how do you talk people into it? I love it. Aisha and Mike are laughing right now. How would you talk someone into something if they didn't want to give it up? Well, we never try to force anybody or embarrass anybody into giving something up, but we explain that, you know, by giving it to the museum, it's really giving it to the nation, and it becomes part of this long history of explaining many aspects of American democracy. Okay, the weirdest thing you've ever collected. <laughs> well, we try and collect more representative things. I mean, we, we collect some ironic things. So Such I, as? Well, one of my favorites was uh, we collected a giant sharpened uh, right in Ralph Nader pencil that was mounted to the top of an automobile, you know, careening through the streets of Manchester, New Hampshire, during the primary a couple of cycles ago. It was kind of like unsafe at any speed. You know, this giant pencil. That's the last thing I want going in my head is a giant pencil. All right, most unique thing for you that you've collected. Oh, I think it's hard to say if you put it on the spot like this. Um, I think in many respects, you know, it's those kinds of things that people make and sell the vendors to really, you know, create some sort of negative effect on some candidate. I think our tear apart doll, the Clinton tear apart doll, which was this horrible Velcro, was a Velcro piece. Velcro doll with all the appendages were Velcro on. You could tear apart. But how charming. And they, um, tell me about this pineapple hat. Bryant seemed a little bit skeptical and, and wondered Those why anybody made, would want well, to keep this. That sort of threw us for a loop because we were near the Ohio and the Hawaiian delegates and we thought it was a, well, from coming from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's Ohio. But there were about 30 or maybe 40 of these made up. It's a paper mache hat. Uh, it's something that's sort of interesting and unique. And uh, Why a pineapple? Well, it's dull. Oh, and that's that's yeah. the key. <laughs> I can't See what makes this so great? I mean, it's not so much about the candidate, it's just about the coverage. I mean, you sort of see this kind of event and the artifacts that become part of a campaign. These guys are pros, able to talk the hat off your head. Oh, hey, well. I won't ask you for the t-shirt. And the shirt off your back. Okay, well, thanks a lot. But there are disappointments, too, on the campaign trail. I was admiring your hat. Oh, you do? You can't have mine? It's nice to see this kind of attachment to this kind yeah. of material. Otherwise, what we're doing has less meaning. Talking the shirt off the guy, I mean, that was great. Yesterday, the candidates, their headquarters, their paraphernalia were all here. Now, it's history. Another primary in Harry and Larry's trunk. How was this convention in terms of memorabilia? Good, so-so? Well, it has its certain canned elements, but we collect that too. For example, we were in here early this morning to get ready for the show, and we got one of the uh, the go lights from the podium, which is sort of the, the traffic light for all of the speakers. <laughs> can the can you just take that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> Pick that up. I don't know. Maybe they will know. <laughs> yeah. The stuff people bring and wear and wave. To me, this is really what democracy is all about. I'm looking for something that is almost iconic, you know, piece of Americana that is, that represents an individual's activism. In Charlotte this week, they convinced some delegates to send them their glitzy hats and shirts, and donkeys aplenty. It'd be a real honor to have them in the collection. It would be an honor. So how many of these do you have, just generally? Well, well four different designer outfits. So, Mr. President. And while Clint Eastwood's now famous chair well, certainly caught their eye. I can't tell them they do that. They regret they don't have room for it. The items date back to our nation's first president. I'm always looking for the next thing. Two political junkies trolling for what they see as convention treasure. Kristen Welker, NBC News, Charlotte, North Carolina. Good night. Can I have this football? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally in here. Up next, Dancing in the Streets with Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. But first, this is today on NBC.